Uh, Jim, that's a very good question. I, I think the time is fast approaching when we have to have modular construction to meet the tremendous demand for homes. Uh, the post-World War II uh, burgeoning mass of young couples, earlier retirement ages, more Social Security and pensions are demanding that people on fixed incomes uh, can have quality homes at a low cost. Most people, when they think of a modular home, think of a mobile home. How related are they? There, today, a, a mobile home, for example, could never qualify for uh, FHA financing or uh, a Southern Building Code, uh, meet Southern Building Code requirements. So there, there's a vast difference. Uh, our, our hope is that we will be building eventually mobile and modular homes of, of equal strength and permanence. Uh, and by the beginning of next year, our modular homes will have Southern Building Code approval and FHA financing. idea what he was dealing with. He did not know why the driver ran, and he did not know that Felix was a juvenile until after he caught him. The father of the wounded boy, Frank Felix of 9859 Brockbank, voluntarily told investigating officers at the hospital that his son had smoked marijuana, had taken speed, was a habitual truant, and that he had committed the boy at one time to the Gatesville Reformatory as an incorrigible. What's your opinion on this? Should they get out of the film making business, in your opinion? I can't really comment on it. I know that we're in dire need of product. It would seem to me that the problem that faces television now is that because of the shortage of movie product that these made-for-television uh, movies are filling, that we're getting some films on the air now that have no place in the home on the television screen. They may be fine for the theaters, but not for the home. And we ran one just about a week ago called Hurry Sundown. It was an adult-only movie. It was not properly edited by the network. And as I say, they're down at the bottom of the barrel now, so now they're looking at pictures that I don't think they should even look at for television exposure. If the networks were forced out of the filmmaking business, do you see the film industry, per se, filling that void? Yes, I see them filling it, but they still have only that same customer to go to. They have to go to the networks and hopefully have them lease that product. could handle the same number of people, and one bus takes up only the space of about three cars. The crowding of streets would obviously be reduced in direct proportion to the number of us who overcome that too-good-to-ride-the-bus attitude. 
The excuses heard most often for not riding public conveyances are it's inconvenient, takes too long, or costs too much. For the sake of study, Channel 8 Special Project field producer Reggie Ward Jr. and I took the Fort Worth to Dallas Turnpike Express bus as an example. At 8 o'clock this morning, bus number 1083 rolled out of the bus terminal in Fort Worth. 37 minutes later, the doors opened in downtown Dallas. Driving legally, you could only beat that time by about three minutes in your own car. The effect of too many cars flooding into downtown Fort Worth could be readily detected on the West Freeway this morning. Every major artery in both cities looks exactly the same. They're jam-packed. And when the cars all get to town, the story gets worse. The latest figures available for Dallas are 1964, but even then, the 45% of the central business district was devoted either to street or parking lot. That's 161 acres of concrete serving no purpose except to hold your car till you're ready for the homeward battle in the afternoon traffic. The best possible study of what happens with too many cars in too small a space is Europe. Here, too, you can find people who have been forced to solve the problem the only sensible way. Europeans, thankfully, have fewer hang-ups about such things as riding trams and buses. They have no choice, and neither, very soon, shall we. In this country, we come to view trolleys as quaint... <laughs>
Amendment 3 would simply permit large corporate farmers and timber companies to hold on to valuable land for speculative purposes, practically tax-free. The legislature would be permitted to pass laws requiring tax assessors to consider something other than market value. The small farmer and homeowner is already overburdened. This inequity would make their taxes even more intolerable. Rather than encourage farmers to remain on the farm, it would actually drive more of them to the city. Counties and school districts would suffer. The land speculator would capitalize on development, just as the notion suited him. It's a bad amendment, and it should be defeated. It offers help to the very few at the expense of millions. The present tax structure of many counties would be wrecked. I think the Joint Conference Committee uh, approach to it and our methods of making our budget are absolutely wrong, as I point out in this paper. When 10 men can get back in the back room and add, add items to the budget that have never been discussed by your representative or my representative, 97 million in the last session that were the Joint Conference Committee over and above which was in the governor's budget or anybody else's budget, that is wrong. And if you look over a period of years, we uh, cite the weekly park incident in 63, but if you look over a period of years, this is where the trade out in the pork barrel items come into the budget. We can't afford pork barrel items in our budget anymore. Officer Dorn and the youth, neither aware of the other's presence, all but collided at the fence. Felix tripped at the fence and Officer Dorn fell on top of it and his service revolver discharged. Felix jumped up and ran for approximately 30 yards before falling to the ground. Officer Dorn caught up to Felix at this point, and he informed Officer Dorn that he had been shot. The driver escaped. An ambulance was summoned, and Felix was taken to Parkland Hospital. En route to the hospital, Felix told Officer R.L. Smith that Officer Dorn did fall on top of him when he tripped at the fence. It was determined later that the pickup truck had been stolen sometime after 10 p.m. Monday night. 